Welcome to Spectral Edition. I'm Tim Prossel. I think I've mentioned before that some of my favorite ghost reports are those that give a significant history to the haunted house or whatever the haunted site might be. A lot of times these articles are pretty sketchy. You don't really know who or what the ghost is. There's just weird stuff happening. But here's an article that gives a very substantial background to the haunting. It was published on May 7th of 1891 in the St. John's Herald, a newspaper from Arizona, and the headline is, A Musical Phantom, Violin Solos by a Ghost That Haunts a Mine. The strange story told of a deserted cabin down in Alabama, sweet strains from an invisible musician. Down in the abandoned Arbicucci Gold Mines, 20 miles south of Edwardsville, Alabama, says the Pittsburgh Dispatch, stands the ruins of a log cabin where years ago a mysterious and bloody crime was committed. The place is haunted, but not by visible ghosts. No white-robed phantom forms walk with noiseless tread across the broken vine-covered floor of the old cabin. No specter lights gleam through the one window or across the rotten threshold of the shutterless door. The ghost is heard, not seen, and no one who has once heard the sounds that come from the old cabin at midnight will ever again doubt the existence of spooks. The ghostly sounds are the music of a violin. The playing is not that of a master, but it is good, and it is soft and low as though the soul of the player was in sympathy with his music. Night after night, for many years, this ghostly violin, played by ghostly hands, has awakened the echoes of the deserted cabin. First, there is heard the thrumming on the strings, a tuning of the instrument, and then the bow is drawn across the strings when they are all in perfect harmony. A sweet Scottish love ballad of olden days is first played. Then comes the familiar music of the Scots Highland Fling. Then there is a brief pause, another thrumming of the strings, and then on the night air softly floats the music of that old Scottish song within a mile o' Edinburgh town. One stanza is finished, another is begun. The music is softer, sweeter than before, when suddenly it stops in the middle of a bar and is heard no more until the following night, when the same program is repeated. Of course, there is a story attached to the old cabin, a story to explain the ghostly music, and a weird story it is. In 1868, when the Arbicucci gold mines were filled with prospectors, two old California miners turned up there one day. Their names were Martin Burke and Daniel McLeod. They were past middle life and had been mining in California and Nevada for 20 years with indifferent success. McLeod was a Scotchman, and to the newly discovered gold mine he brought an old violin, which he never tired of playing when asked to perform. The two miners rented the cabin and went to work prospecting among the hills. They had been there only a few weeks when other miners and prospectors noticed they went out early in the morning, always going in the same direction, and did not return till night. Many suspected they had struck it rich somewhere in the hills, but as no one else had been able to find gold in paying quantities, it was finally agreed that Burke and McLeod were merely following some blind lead. One day, the two men were missing. Next day, they were still missing, and the cabin was visited. The dead body of McLeod was lying on the floor of the cabin. He had been shot through the head while sitting in front of the fire, playing his violin. When he fell, his fingers stiffened on his violin, and when in removing them from the dead man's hands, the bow was drawn across the strings by accident. The old fiddle emitted a wail for the dead musician, which, it is stated, made those who heard it shudder. Burke was gone, and naturally he was suspected of the murder of his partner. There seemed to be but one reasonable theory of the crime, that the two men had made a rich find, that Burke had murdered his companion, and taking all the gold, had fled. The theory was generally accepted, but as there was no positive evidence against Burke, no effort was made to find him. None dared to charge him with the murder of McLeod because they had no evidence. Burke spent his days and nights in the one saloon of the little town. 
About that time the ghostly violin playing in the old cabin was first heard, and one night a frightened countryman was giving an account of it in the saloon at Arbicucci. Burke heard the story, and it was noticed that he turned deadly pale, and staggering to the bar called for a glass of liquor. From that night Burke drank more and more, and in a week he was on the verge of the Jim Jams. Late one night he reeled up to the bar and called for liquor. A crowd of countrymen were drinking in the back room, and one of them was playing a violin. Burke paid no attention to the music at first, but just as he raised the glass to his lips, the country fiddler began to play Within a Mile, O Edinburgh Town. The glass of liquor fell from Burke's trembling fingers, and with a gasp, he fell to the floor. The look of terror on the man's face was one never to be forgotten. He fell all in a heap, and in five minutes, he was dead. The doctors said he died of heart failure caused by drink and sudden excitement. I'm Tim Prossel, and I've collected over 300 of these ghost reports, all of them printed in actual U.S. newspapers between 1865, the end of the American Civil War, and 1917, when the U.S. entered World War I. I've chosen the scariest, the most intriguing, and a few of the funniest for a book titled Spectral Edition, Ghost Reports from U.S. Newspapers 1865 to 1917. It's at Amazon in paperback and Kindle, and you can find it at other online bookstores, too. For more information, visit brombonesbooks.com.